In this video, I'm going to be breaking down how I basically dominate on both sides of the ball in a full game of Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name's Cody, and I want to take you inside my head today, kind of show you what I'm doing, why I do what I do, and why I think what I think about this game. We're running on offense our bunch tight end ebook. On defense, we're running our nickel 335 white ebook. And if you want to get either one of those, those links are in the description. Now, really quickly before we dive too deep into this video, I wanted to let you know that if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's completely free to subscribe, and it allows you to get all of my tips and strategies that I release on YouTube. Pretty much every single day, I release about eight videos on YouTube a day. Um, so we try to basically give you guys as much content as possible and cover as much as we possibly can to help you become a better player. So again, it's completely free to subscribe, um, and I'd really appreciate it. I think it would really help you out as well. If you have any questions about what you see in today's video, you can always text me. My number is 812-216-3644. It's also in the top left-hand corner of your um, of the of the uh, screen right there. All right, so we're playing the Chiefs. Um, Tyreek Hill is obviously a very, very good player. Um, so, you know, we got to be kind of, you know, aware of that. But really, the Chiefs' defense is not the greatest. So we're coming out in our bunch tight end here uh, and just keeping it simple. One of my little tips here, and I haven't talked a lot about this, um, but when you when you run bunch tight end, the way that we used to run this offense, the way that I used to run this offense, is as it, you would basically hold right trigger as soon as you did the play action movement, the mechanic of the play action, you would hold right trigger. Now what I like to do, especially if I can get out of the pocket, is instead of holding right trigger at the snap of the ball, I wait until I know I'm going to run. So I'm just kind of going to roll, you know, just roll, 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 and then throw. And what I find is I don't miss any throws. I don't miss any throws when I do that. Um, especially in regs, because Aaron Rodgers has an ability called roaming dead eye, which basically means as long as he's outside of the pocket, he's going to get perfect throw accuracy as long as he's not moving. So, yeah, I know he's still moving a little bit, but I just I haven't missed any throws. I've missed zero throws rolling out like that, and uh, that's huge for me. So, anyways, right here, uh, we're going to get up on the board early. Curl flat corner is an absolute laser of a play. Now I'm going to set up my coaching adjustments right here on defense. And what I like to do on defense is I like a couple different things that I've been doing lately. I've been putting my flats at 20, my curl flats at 10, and my hooks at 5. I'm just trying a little bit of a different strategy on defense. Basically what we're doing is we're saying you can throw the quick flats or we're just going to come up and tackle you as soon as you throw them. Um, and the flats, we might adjust them back a little bit more. I've been running a lot of cover four, and I've been running a lot of cover six uh, over the last probably week or so, and, you know, it's been working really, really well for me. So, anyways, bunch tight end is off to a really, really good start. Uh, defense hopefully will be off to a similar start uh, to to what the offense was. But as you can see, when, when, you, when you just kind of, on that rollout play, when you just kind of allow it to, to really kind of develop on its own instead of trying to force it so much, it makes a huge difference, in my opinion. Um, you don't; ha it, it, it makes it better. It just makes it better. That's the bottom line. So, I really like it. it, it I've come in, I've come across so many inaccurate passes and things like that. This has helped me a lot. I can still scramble. I still get out of the pocket. I still get everything of the of the beauty of the rollout. I still get the glitchy um, thing where the linebacker will blitz on a delay fade. I get all of those things. But now I don't have to worry about inaccurates, right? And we all watch the Madden uh, Club Championships where Stiff was dotting every single play out of this offense, but he did not. Um, he 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 kept rolling out and he kept getting inaccurate throws. So, anyways, that's enough about that. Defensively, we're running three three five uh, into three three five wide. My favorite way to play defense right now in Madden twenty one. Uh, right here, we're going to go to some man coverage just to start here um, and just see kind of what he's doing. Not crossing out to Tyreek, absolutely roasted man to man coverage. But luckily for us, Perry Nickerson came over and got an immediate tackle. When you're playing the Chiefs, you obviously you have to worry about Tyreek Hill a lot, um, in my opinion. So we're going to try to really take him away a little bit. Um, right here, he's going to run that crazy, crazy corner route. Perry Nickerson's not deep enough. So good read by him, and that's where we might have to back it off. If he hits another one of those routes uh, on us, then we will instantly back it off. Um, literally, like, immediately back it off. So 
So we'll just see here. And he's running his crossing routes, his drag routes. Now he's going to, it looks like from the onset of things, he's going to want to run uh, a lot of drag routes. So that's on me a little bit to kind of prepare for that. Uh, right here, we're going to this setup right here. Um, and good run by him. Get down, and I think he got about 15 or about 10 yards there. Again, defensively on the first drive, I'm not ever trying to stop somebody 100%. I'm just trying to uh, just get a little bit of an understanding of what they like to do. That's all I'm trying to do here. So, And there's that drag again. And that's what happens with those curl flats. When you put them at 10 yards, you do give up a lot of drag routes. Okay, You do give up a lot of drag routes. So now what we're going to do is kind of change it up on them a little bit here. And we're going to run this right here. Trying to take away everything quick, and Tyreek Hill just got just beat him late. So now he's inside the five, and when he gets down here in the red zone, I'd like to change these up. I like to take the flats and put them at ten. I put the curl flats at five. Um, another thing you could do is you could flip that. You could put flats at five, and uh, and curl flats at ten. But defensively, what I like to do in the red zone is you're going to see that I'm going to shift into this forty uh, four defense. Um, it's just something I've been working on a little bit under the hood. But um, basically, we're just using this. We're just going to pinch our line, crash it out. And you see, it does a pretty good job against most of the runs that people are going to use. Another defense that you could do out of this is you could run it to where basically, but essentially, we're going to run double flats. So we have max coverage. And then we have a spy in a deep blue, right? So this right here, and he hits me with a curl route. Good read by him. And for whatever reason, our controller just randomly hit sticking people. Now, now we're in a situation right here where I really like to run this linebacker fire play. Um, and I know that my responsibility is 100% uh, Tyree Kill. If Tyree Kill goes out on a route, that's who I'm going to get. And I should have got a pick right there, but I didn't. So this guy, uh, we'll see if he goes for it on fourth down and one or fourth down and goal. He might. But this is where I go through, and again, I'll go in between linebacker, fire, um, and then I'll go in between the zone setup as well. And there we go. See, because you get that six-man pressure, so you get really good pressure. And uh, we're able to get him right before he throws it. He had a guy open right there, but we were able to get in there before he throws it. Now, um, ball in the four-yard line, it's kind of a tricky scenario. You know, you might think, well, you just run the ball. Uh, another thing that I talked about in another Inside the Mind video is... When you're playing a game of Madden, in my opinion, your goal, when you really want to start to kind of take over a game and lead the game away from somebody, you want to get to a 17. And that was a really, really good pass there by Rodgers. I don't know if you saw that. I think he went underhanded on that play. But um, your goal is to get to a 17-point lead. So he gets ball at half. That's a disadvantage to me. If he didn't get ball at half, and we were up seven to nothing in the first half and had ball. It's a completely different way of playing, because if he if he didn't get ball at half, I would only be concerned with three. Because he gets ball at half, I have to at least um, it has to cross my mind that I should probably go try to get seven on this drive. Okay, obviously you're always trying to get seven, but you know again you know it's just kind of one of those things of like perspective here. So, anyways, Valdez Scantling hits him on that cover four. And my controller glitched out once again. My For whatever reason, my controller has been doing this weird thing where it just like randomly will juke or a randomly hit stick. So not sure why. But um, anyway, right there, probably could have scored a touchdown with MVS. That corner route is so underrated. It's one of the most underrated. In my opinion, the, the two most underrated plays from bunch tight end are the inside switch and then that specific corner route. Now, he's shown that he likes to run a lot of zone coverage. So I'm going to go to this little zone beater setup out of inside switch. It's one of my favorite ways to beat zone coverage in the game. Um, and, of course, he goes to man. But we can play maker. He must have been in some kind of match zone or something. But anyway, Devontae Adams gets open and gets us into scoring position. Once I'm in scoring position and, and I didn't you know, I didn't go back to the pre-play menu, but typically when I'm in scoring position, I don't like to um, – and here we'll just throw it away. Once I'm in scoring position, I typically will, and I didn't do it there, of course, uh, I will typically go down into uh, conservative just to be safe. You know, you don't ever want to give the ball away uh, to anyone in that situation. So 
Anyway, tight end corner here. We're going to step up, step up, step up. We had a touchdown right there, but um, good defense by him. And we're going to bring up, that's going to bring up a third and 11. So, uh, third and 11 here. We're going to go to inside switch. The reason why is I think he's going to be in that cover, um, that cover force uh, drop defense. So, we've got some check downs and stuff right here, but really we're trying to hit Tunyon. Um, and we're just going to take our flat. We might be able to get that first down. And we're not able to get it. Uh, it's going to bring down a fourth and short. So what I like to do in a fourth down, like a situation like this right here, where it's fourth and short, three minutes left in the second, number one, you have to realize that he could go both go down and score before half, and he can also go down and turn them all over before half, right? So now what I have to think through mentally is, okay, and, and just kind of see what he does. Now, he did the one thing that I don't think he should have done. He's going to a... Um, he's going to a max pressure setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a max protect, and we have two routes on the field that can beat man-to-man -man and a delay fade. So we'll see how this works here. And obviously the slant gets wide open, and that's a touchdown for Green Bay Packers. Um, again, I kind of knew what he was doing. That's the only time he's called 3-4 bear all game long. You know that someone, what they're trying to do is they're trying to gas you up, and we just basically backs protected. We had two reads against man, two routes that get open against man, and then if, if he was into some type of max coverage or something like that, then the delay fade would have been wide open against that. We could have rolled out and hit that. So we just had some really good reads um, for that defense. The one thing that I really like about bunch tight end is, is a lot of people think that it's not that great against the blitz. Two reasons why it's good. Number one, the PA crossplay is immensely effective against the blitz because he's rolling out naturally. He gets away from the pocket. He doesn't have to deal with the pressure most of the time. He can get out of the pocket and go make a play. The second reason I really like this offense against the blitz is because of how effective the block and release routes are. So you could block, like what I just did right there, I have two routes that if they blitz, they block. If they don't blitz, then they just go out on the route. And to me, that's been very, very effective. So... Anyways, that's a little bit about that. And again, if you want to get the full offense, that link is in the description of this video. I'm going to move my curl flats and stuff back to this setting right here. Um, he's probably going to run that corner route, so uh, i got to watch that. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. I'm going to get my adjustments off. So if he runs that corner route, I need to go get it. I need to go get it. I need to go get it. And I do. Okay, now I'm just randomly hit sticking. And he gets a nice little late read. Good read by him. One of the other things we're going to do on this drive is we're going to send a little bit more pressure at him, like right here. Uh, and the reason why is because is just to just to give him another thing to think about. Uh, when you run this nickel three three five wide defense, you have to occasionally just gas him up and just send some pressure and just see what see who he's blocking, how he's doing it. And there you see the pressure gets home. Now he's in a situation where clock is ticking, right? Clock is ticking. So we're going to go to a vert hook on that side, vert hook on two vert hooks, uh, basically. And we just basically have to take care of the middle. Unfortunately, he just hit a laser. Wow. All right, so our controller can't stop hit sticking, so I'm going to change over to another controller to hopefully keep that from happening. All right, so he's in tight offset tight end again. Uh, we're going to stick into this defense here now just to see how this works against him. We're going to take Tyreek, Tyreek, Tyreek. Okay, good good read. And again, now we're in a situation he's got 24 yards to go before he can get a touchdown. So we're going to play a little bit more conservative. He's only got one timeout. So it's really a battle against the clock. So we're going to back these two things off right here uh, and really think that try to force him to really take some stuff Underneath, so we're gonna go to some some uh, some cover three here, maybe. And we got the three wreck over there on that side of the field. We're just trying to kind of force him to take the drag route, and that's okay. Um, ideally, we would have made the tackle and bounce though. So we're gonna come back in here now, because now that you see the field is starting to shrink on him, so we're gonna go with this setup right here: five, fifteen, and five. And he's going to go down into his running set, which you, I don't think he's going to run the ball. But he might, so we have to be ready for that. And he does run it. Okay. And that's fine. Like That's like that's almost exactly what we want him to do. Because now, now the clock's ticking, 
and now look, I mean, now he's now he's going to have to you know make a make a play, make a decision quick. So Tyree Kill is the guy that I want to take care of. I just want to take care of these corner routes, take care of the corner routes. Come over here, come over here, come over here. And he almost had a touchdown. This is also a situation where you could run some more man-to-man -man type of coverage. The one issue with that is the Chiefs naturally do a pretty good job of beating man-to-man. -man, so that's the one issue. Another thing is a sack would be detrimental to him here. Um, or actually, I guess it wouldn't be that detrimental to him. So we're just gonna we're just gonna play our base D. Keep it keep it simple and just try to force him to take the underneath, take the underneath, take the underneath. And I think he almost threw us an interception. All right, so now a sack would be big, but it's third down and ten anyway. If he gets stopped here, more than likely he's gonna take a field goal. So you know again, all of these are factors uh, into how we're gonna play this. So we're going to do that. We've got two zones. We're going to throw a flat zone over there on that left side. Um, and really what we're trying to trying to do is catch him. These outside quarters do a pretty good job against corner routes. Yep, there we go. So he threw that corner route. We should have got the pick right there. We didn't. Now if he goes for it, we will blitz him. But he's probably going to take his three. So now we're in a completely different situation. That's what I talk about, like... I think it's it would be smart to to occasionally tweak, you know what I mean, to tweak these as the situation um, as the situation requires it. So like right here, he needs ten yards. So, but he's also got to go for the end zone a little bit. So you know this is where you know we could do basically a match defense. We're gonna play two vert hooks. We're gonna give him all the time in the world right here. And some people would disagree with this logic. We are. We're gonna give him all the time in the world. We're gonna and there we go. And it, that was crazy. It went through my hands and it went through his, his hands. It left us one second on the clock. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and quit out. He didn't like that at all. But that is a pretty decent defensive stand. Um, some different tactics with the changing of the zone drops I think is really important to, to note. But if you want to get the full 335 wide ebook, that link's in the description. If you want a free sample, just text me. And if you want to get the full bunch tied in ebook, that link is also in the description. We'll see you tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern time.